more and more we find that standing up for justice, resisting dispossession and abuse is labeled terrorism and is criminalized. Here in Canada, we see it for ourselves. The Suzuki Foundation, Greenpeace have become suspect and are nearing you know, terrorist labels for standing up for environmental justice. The South Africans, for instance, in their quest for justice in the, in, 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 in the apartheid South Africa, they also were called terrorists. Nelson Mandela, who died as a Nobel Prize winner, who died as a peaceful person, who died as a man of peace who brought peace to his country and even beyond his country, was a terrorist during the apartheid regime. So this is uh, a normal uh, falsification, uh, demonization uh, of the people who are under oppression, who are oppressed. And this, unfortunately, is the continuous narrative of the oppressors. This myth is, I think it's injustice about the Palestinians, and I encourage the people to hear and to see the Palestinian people, not to hear about them or people talking about them, and not to generalize. We are human, and we are people. We have been hearing this stigma uh, uh, onto our shoulders since many, many years, I would say. And uh, we're talking about uh, nowadays uh, uh, not less than 4.2 million people between Gaza and the West Bank and Jerusalem area. If we are to label Palestinians as terrorists, simply for claiming their rights to live in their uh, own state. Uh, if we are to label them as terrorists, for those who are asking for uh, sovereignty, who are asking for peace and justice, uh, I think uh, that needs to be reclassified and redefined. When we speak about terrorism, which I see it as violence, which I am, where I am against it, it's as disease, as hatred, which are made. It's manufactured. It's a result of exposure. So instead of blaming someone who is violent, to say he or she, they are violent, we need to dig deeper and to find the root causes of any violent act. It has its causes and to treat the causes, not the symptoms. The Palestinian struggle for over 100 years has been largely nonviolent. And there have been incidents of suicide bombing, which according to a Jew, Avi Schleim says it's only 3% of the resistance of the Palestinians. And we have to understand that frustration may lead to people taking uh, actions that are not part of their norm, okay? And there has been more violence all over the world than in Palestine. But actually focusing on that, I think, is an excuse not to want to do the efforts to bring about a just peace. Using violent means, it depends on what you, how you term violent means, because occupation is an act of uh, a state violent mean. And that's why violence is, in my opinion, is intolerable and it is rejected and stay straightforward I would say we as Palestinians we do not sub subscribe to violence. The political leadership and a great number of people and most of the Palestinians I would say believe that we cannot realize uh, our aims and objectives in statehood and sovereignty except through peaceful means. I say no. Palestinians are no more terrorists than any other people placed in an unjust and abusive situation for 50 years and having virtually no options or recourse. <laughs>